And a lot of everybody settled into Vallejo. Right. I'm a, we're a minting melting pot. I'm gonna do something for your podcast. I'm gonna show everybody my hair. I was told not to. I keep <laughs> I getting asked if I'm a perm, but, but it's I'm gonna okay. do it just for today, you know, because I just want to show you Vallejo is crazy. It's a yeah. melting pot. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Queen's Vantage Podcast. I'm sitting down with my homie, my brother, Essex Cook. I got it. <laughs> but uh, Essex, seriously? Anyways, y'all, before we jump in, and this is going to it's going <laughs> to this is how it would be today with us. But anyways, yeah, y'all figure it before out. we before we jump in, let me tell you a little bit about Essex. So Essex is a Vallejo, California native, born and raised, press site. <laughs> Essex is also the newly appointed Susun City Commissioner over Parks parks and Recreation, the videography and photography. Um, Essex is also an actor who co-starred on NBC's television show Trauma. Z-list actor. Z-list. I mean, but you know, you no, did act. <laughs> um, and then Essex, you also, you're also the executive director um, of the Vallejo Boys and Girls Empowerment Group. Mm -hmm. um, which I want to hear more about today. Um, Essex is also the loving husband to his wonderful and beautiful wife, Karina Cook, and they have three amazing children. So Essex, welcome to Queens Vantage Podcast. Wow, thank you. Thank you. You made me feel like a king, and I appreciate that. Biographies isn't my best, best, best thing in life. You yeah, know? but I, I got but you. Your sister got you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. I take the accolades. I learned how to live through it and accept it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or see my flowers while I'm here. No. And we're going to give you your flowers because let's be real. You're doing some incredible work in our community. Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Incredible work in our community. And um, because it's so fresh, let's talk about what happened yesterday in Vallejo, California. Yesterday, what happened in Vallejo, California, I'm still taking it in at this moment. Even with the tapping of the foot, I can just, it's, it's excitement. It really yeah. is. I had an art exhibi exhibition and a grant writing workshop. The reasons why I threw both of these things was mainly, and it, and it tells what's going on with me being a commissioner. What is a commissioner? It's hearing the people, being able to feel what they what they want, what they need in the community, not even the community, in life. Mm -hmm. um, me and you talk about vision and purpose and I see your purpose. You, 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 like I say, you got my purpose. I feel like a king. It's like my beanie <laughs> is my crown, you know? It's all but, royalty here. You know, yesterday was a beautiful event to kind of exemplify what I plan on doing in Sassoon City. I can't make any problems. I'm speaking on my behalf and not on behalf of the commission, but yeah. just on how I feel. Um, but what happened in Vallejo, it was so unique because it came from a place where, you know, notoriously known as King's Market, Vallejo, Crestside, Matt Dre, side shows, however you want to, you know, depict the Bay Area or Vallejo area or a bad neighborhood. Well, this is it. Yeah. You know, that's our hood. We, we grew up there. Right. Right. But there's that's people out there, right? Made us who we are today. So those people is who I got to kind of listen to and to be an executive director um, over the Boys and Girls Empowerment Group. It's just something that I'm doing and I'm just filling a role and something that we can all do in our community is just saying, hey, I'll take the I'll take the reins and I'll take that title and I'll take the crown and I'll wear it and I'll bear it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not even about being a king of my city or anything like that. But I'll wear that 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 burden of saying, yo, I'm hearing you guys. Yeah, I'll sit back and I'll take I'll sit at that table with you and I'll listen to what you have saying, just how we're sitting here, mm -hmm. you know, for everybody know, I might have a, a hurt leg and a limp walking in, but me sending you eye to eye, it looks like a normal conversation between two people. Yeah. And, you know, being with the community and being out there in Vallejo yesterday was, I want I want art. I want art. I want art. There's not enough depiction of who we are. Yeah. What we are. What is our history? So yesterday, Black History Month and telling, um, Intel and the vision behind it, we idolized all of our, what we would say, black historians. And yeah. We idolized them. We had, you know, the first mayor of Vallejo. Osby Davis. Osby Davis, yeah. yes. The first commissioner of the school district. Um, 
man, just so many different people and they're unique. And so many stories, stories to tell. We were able to paint different pictures of heroes. Matt Dre, right. you know, we had his uncle there. Yeah. And if you know his uncle, that's an icon in Vallejo. Foster Hicks, right? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that is, it's just bloodlines out there. My bloodline, I'm a cook. Yeah. Your bloodline. I'm an Allen. There you go. Yeah. So if you start knowing and we start throwing names out there, there's so much rich rich history. So we pulled from that. Yeah. Uh, thank you to the One t- Tribe, um, One Tribe Inc. You know they came out mm-hmm. and they had kids, kids of color, yeah. um, come out and paint on the wall. I mean, paint on playing a mural of Fillmore Graham. And if you guys don't know Fillmore Graham, I want you guys to do your research on him. He started in his garage with five kids, funding them college tour, everything. Showed them college. You know, you guys can go to college for free. We don't have to pay. Right. So that's just a little bit what we were trying to immortal, immortalize and bring to the neighborhood where we didn't see it growing in. We right. didn't see art, but we, we didn't seen see our art. artists. We seen yeah. Matt Dre. We seen Doobie. We seen Coolio the right. dog. We seen them. First time I seen Matt Dre and, you know, him and Doobie, you know, the, the bloodline there. He's Grew up on the same out, block. He's handing out Turf Buccaneer right. CDs to me. And I'm like, yo, like, this is just Doobie and Matt Dre. Thank you. Right. You know, but. As we get older and we realize the impact that they had, not even though as a artist, as a rapper, or, you know, the traditional art that we say is just painting. I had artists come and they wanted to hear their voices heard. Right. They wanna be paid in like they don't want their passive art just giving away and saying, Hey, thank you for the Instagram post. Right. So we listened. And it came out beautiful. We, I'm still in taking it. Yeah. We made the Vallejo let's, Times Herald. Yeah, let's let's talk yeah. about. Um, there's some grants that are, are available to right. local artists, and I think um, that's really really important to yes. exemplify because, like you said, it's not about just being paid for the art. It's really about like uplifting these artists yes. um, and showing the importance that they have and the inspiration that they have on our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, the Rumpa Room, uh, that album was <laughs> yes. a true inspiration to my life, yeah. right? I mean, Pawns to show up game. at uh, Solano yeah. Jr.'s <laughs> high school repping Mac Dre at that time mm-hmm. was huge. Um, and he was like family to me. Right. Um, so there's this opportunity now, and I really want you to speak to that, where our artists from Vallejo... Um, podcasters. So podcasters, if you're listening, I always like to uplift my other podcasters. There's an opportunity for you to get a grant to do this work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm smiling because uh, let's say I'm savvy with my words per se. Like I always say, if you had an empty room, what would you put in it? This is just always my opening question to people. So I'm just going to ask, if you had an empty room, what would you put in it? Yeah. So I'm thinking back on my podcast event um, that I hosted at CoBiz in mm-hmm. Richmond, which is an entrepreneur center. Um, and essentially the room is filled, right, with furniture. Mm-hmm. But that evening I decided to fill the room with people of all walks of life. And for me, I see Queen's Vantage not only just uplifting the community, but connecting the community. All right. And so I would fill the room with connectors. And I believe that's each and every one of us in this room today Mm -hmm. so that we can share a wealth of knowledge to be able to uplift each other, those in that room, take it back to our communities, our families, and then to be able to uplift others. Mm -hmm. And so I see that room as something that's more expansive, the room that keeps building. All right. So that vision, I just heard so many different things. But I'm going to come find and bring it all the way back to the point of why we asked. This is what the grant writing workshop was about. What do you feel like art is? I heard you so loud and clear in here and me just with the experience I have in grant writing or nonprofit work or hearing the people of Vallejo, we went to Hewlett Packard or the Hewlett Fund. So there's Mm -hmm. Hewlett and there's Packard, two people, but you can go to the Hewlett Fund and get something from Hewlett Fund. You can go to Packard Fund and get something from Packard. So, hey, Hewlett, hey, Packard. So we went to Hewlett. Mm -hmm. They gave stewardship to for $500,000 to um, Three Palms Group in Vallejo, mm-hmm. which created the Vallejo Arts Fund. Mm-hmm. Long and behold, that's what we were presenting yesterday in Vallejo. So after our art show, we invited all the artists, all the kids to stay after from four to five. We had a great show out. I think there was uh, 35 people signed up in the class for grant writing. This grant is giving away, the, the application is for Vallejo residents only. And we had to fight for this grant from Hewlett Fund. Just to say, hey, yo, there's people up top making decisions on black funding on 
where this money is going, how it's going to be, and what I'll say, allocated out. So mm-hmm. there's no advocacy for us. Right. So with the advocacy, even my face being young per se, there's somebody out here, Dr. Kirby Lynch, 27. Dr. Kirby Lynch. Got to put doctor on this girl name. She's 27. Yes. But that's a whole nother thing. Shout like, out Kirby, Dr. Kirby Lynch. <laughs> Dr. Kirby She's Lynch. She's amazing. She went through negotiations with Hewlett Fund, you know, back when they did the community data thing. And mm-hmm. was like, yo, you guys gave us 500000 but we didn't touch it. So let's give it to the people and let them be able to one to give it out. So North Vallejo wasn't being represented, basically point blank period. We came to the the table late. We negotiated in mm-hmm. being able to be part of sitting on a panel of 15. So yeah. so this panel of 15 people, 15 people of Vallejo will be able to be on the panel, decide where the money goes, decide how it's going to be given out, decide the nonprofits, decide if good company is a, going to be a good steward of yeah. this money. Good company, that's La Russell. Shout out to North Vallejo. But yeah, shout out know, La Russell. You know, yeah. You know, and it's not even about North Vallejo, it's about Vallejo all together. And right. that's one thing we're pushing as an initiative that, you know, you can't miss out on all Vallejo artists. Right. Um, so yesterday that event was so unique. Because so, so many people has never seen a grant, opened a grant. So what we did is we put financial literacy, grant mm-hmm. writing. You guys, grant writing is financial literacy. Grant writing is financial literacy. Absolutely. So we shut the workshop. Yeah. They had a great turnout. People were, and the question was asked there, different from mine. So I asked you about an empty room in a box. Mm-hmm. I heard Dr. Kirby Lynch ask you, money wasn't an option. What would you do? Yeah. And I told Dr. Kirby Lynch, I'd buy back the block Um, because so many of us, like what we've talked about is we all grew up in a crest and none of us are there anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, In part because many of our families lost their homes, Mm -hmm. right? Through lack of knowledge Mm -hmm. um, and passing those homes on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, yes, it's absolutely important. Um, I'm coming after Amelia. I'm mm. coming after Round Street. I'm coming mm. after Mark Ave yeah, because I was that's say, get that for me too. Because I'm like busy. I just need <laughs> yeah, you right there. Because that that's for where me. our families, we own that property. Um, right. I think my family collectively had at least eight homes, home ownership right. in the country club crest. That's yeah. a big feat. Y'all understand? Yeah. That's a big feat. And if you guys yeah. don't know, you know, Vallejo was bo- uh, built by a black man. Right. You know, and not Vallejo. But the North Vallejo area was built by a black man. They named high schools after him, everything. Right. And there was a few black men who were able to come into the 1950s with Mare Island and everything. We're not going to get into war talk. I'll bore you. But when <laughs> a lot of everybody settled into Vallejo, right. I'm a, we're a minting melting pot. I'm going to do something for your podcast. I'm going to show everybody my hair. I was told not to. <laughs> I keep I getting asked if I'm a perm. But, but it's I'm going to okay. do it just for today, you know, because I just want to show you Vallejo is crazy. It's a <laughs> yeah. melting pot. I'm black, Filipino, Hawaiian, Indian. Yeah. Um, my Filipino family or that side of it, it they not it, but they were uh, the first Filipino family to settle in to Vallejo. Mm-hmm. But that's two generations ago. Mm-hmm. So the darker the skin, the melting pot, we started melting in darker. Right. We started identifying as a Vallejoian. You know, if yeah. you know me, I'm from Vallejo. They're not gonna say oh, that's. That's a black and Filipino boy. They're going to be like, no, <laughs> that's Essex. Now, right. he he grew up through it. And that's why I really wanted to identify with the grant. And it's a BIPOC grant, you know, black, indigenous, people of color. Yes. You, and, you know, it's the, that's what Vallejo is. And why not go to Hewlett Fund and say, hey, let us decide. Because we are the melting pot of what this whole grant entails. Right. So the grant writing course, it was a practical, real grant in front of people where they can see how $500,000 was being broken down and given to the community, how it's e- how easy it is to get $3,500. It's easy to write an application. That's why how easy it is to write, a, write the application and get it. Right. But we put the work in to do it. Yeah. You, I think something that was really important that you said, um, so not only... Are, are you teaching people how to apply for the grant, right, mm-hmm. and apply for the funds? We are also the deciders as well. And I think that's critically important. And so I want to tie that into this mm-hmm. next part of the segment um, where you talked about, the, you know, what you see as the role of the commissioner and that's listening to the people. Mm-hmm. But also 
there's also some decision making factors right. that go along with that role, right. um, which by and large, we're not seeing people of color at the table. Mm -hmm. And so with this grant where we're inviting people in to be able to decide, you know, who are the artists that you want mm -hmm. to give these funds to? In addition to that, I want to say, where do you see our people in terms of commissioner roles and other roles in government that can really help us sit at the table to make decisions for our community? I just was told they done messed up and showed us politics, <laughs> political science. You guys, okay, I'm gonna yeah. say political science. You know, in our world, in our way of breaking down words, we say political. Okay, blue, red, uh, elephant, donkey. And then you say science. So you say uh, genealogy. Uh, give me chromosomes. I'm not gonna keep going too deep into it, but you will get into the factor of saying, you know, there's a political science of if we put. Ebony Essex in a room, mm -hmm. you're beautiful, you're talented, you have everything in front of you, and you put somebody with somebody with opportunity and just me as a commissioner, and I say, hey, I'm going to teach you about city government funding. Mm -hmm. We have certain things that's going to open up, nothing, not I can, we're talking hypothetically, not between council and anything I've heard, but hypothetically, I'm over parking rents. We have a theater. Mm -hmm. Envision yourself in that theater. The envision of not just me and you sitting in here, but envision there's a whole bunch of people sitting over here and we're like, yo, you guys see us and there's a crowd and we're interacting. Yeah. That's a, that's commission. That's understanding what would be good and healthy for the city. Yeah. That's understanding of, okay, somebody sitting at the council and the council, there's a mayor, there's a vice mayor, there's council members, and then there's committees, a different setup. And I'm the commissioner to set up the committees. But... Just because the mayor and I'm a commissioner doesn't mean I can't just say, hey, yo, it's what the mayor says. I have a voice. Yeah. I have a brain. I see something. I can say my spiel to say what I have to do to push my agenda a little bit further because yeah. I believe in it. Yeah. But how many people do you have sitting at that table that believe in you? Right. My, my vision, like I said, they messed up and taught us political science is because Dr. Kirby Lynch, 27, historic um, um, Patrice Lewis is a young woman I met my age. I'm 35, and mm -hmm. I'm, uh, but she's around that age, younger. I can't say her age because, you know, yeah. still respect. Yeah. But it's getting younger. Princess Washington, um, councilman, young woman, black woman, successful. The talks are real. It's yeah. not, it's not, yo, let's do it for stature. It's like, yo, do you see this? Do you see that we can be not so much a gatekeeper? Right. But we can hold this gate open and say, yo, let's do it right. Let's yeah. say with this grant, 15 people, everybody say, yo, give me the grant. Yo, you know, you can be part of this grant. And they're like, well, how do we, how can we trust if they're going to, how are we going to trust if they're going to give it to the right people? I'm like, yo, we're giving the opportunity to be on the seat to right. be able to read an application in your own city. And we're going to start there in that area. You right. can be a steward easily. Yeah. And these are words that people just never heard. And what we say, you're at your queen's vantage and you speaking. You can be a commissioner. You can run for mayor. That's right. You can vote and do the small things in political areas. Yeah. You know, it's very, very intangible. Yeah. So I think one of the things, and we have listeners, so shout out Northern Arizona University, shout out Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. You know, my son's out in Arizona. Um, my nephew is out there as well. And so I have listeners that range, when I check my analytics, it was like 19 um, mm -hmm. to about early 50s. Mm -hmm. Um. What is the path? Because I don't want to assume people know the path that it takes to get into these seats and into these roles. What's the path wow. that you took personally um, to become the commissioner? Ooh, so the paths that I took, it was passion, a lot of passion. Mm -hmm. You know, just learning uh, executive director at the age of, I believe, 22, 21 over a Boys and Girls Club. Um, passion, you know, understanding that I can write easily and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. The whole point is I got in the community, yeah. the Boys and Girls Club, the Boys and Girls Club um, in Vallejo was a flagship. You know, it's yeah. the Ninos, everything ran. So I started there, I volunteered, went from a program aide, went from a program aide to program director, went from program director to unit director, unit director to executive director right. to just fundraising, writing grants. I just never gave up and never said I won't do it. Yeah. The reason why I say this route is the way you get in there mm -hmm. is... Because you just start. Yeah. The difference between corporate and the difference between community resources, 
is community resources. They're going to respect your heart. Mm. So if you find that initiative and you find and you don't know where you're at and you find that that organization or you find that cause, it yeah. will find you and put you in your place. I love that. So you do that and you find you catch your niche there. This is how you get into the the political road. They have a uh, planning commission. They have environmental. They have um, if you do taxes and bookkeeping and other things like that, like my wife and everything. Everybody needs a budget and a bookkeeper. All right. you're going to do is imagine yourself as a state treasurer or city treasurer. You're good yeah. with numbers, go apply. If you want to go apply for a local commission, if you stay in Vallejo, look at the, they hire on the application, the city. They will tell you how to apply. And you'll get nominated in, you keep applying, they'll interview with the mayor and they'll say, why? Why do you want to be a part of this? And if you have that vision, it'll be there. Yeah. But, man. Yeah. So- we didn't plan on this, but I want to bring up the Ninos because that's some Vallejo vernacular right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want that to just go over people's heads. I feel like the Boys and Girls Club Love really that. saved our lives. Amen. Um, that's where we would go for our dances. That's where I went for sex education. <laughs> um, that was our hangout Amen. after school to keep us off the streets. Um, and so that role and you being the executive executive director of that organization and how I'm sure you have changed the trajectory mm-hmm. of many young men's lives. Yeah. Um, so I just want to apply that. But I also, it, it, it brought, it was very phone. nostalgic when you said yeah. the Nittles. Yeah, I know I was going to, you're going to hear some words you ain't heard in a long time. <laughs> yeah. No, <but> go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So what support do you need in this role? Because like I said, I, I, I really want to make sure that we're supporting yes. one another in this work. Um, and I think that you have taken on two incredible roles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as executive director and as commissioner, how can we, the people, support you and others in your role? Don't kill your creativity. Mm. Um, you graduate high school, you said 19 to, ooh, I forgot the age range, 60. Mm-hmm. We'll go, oh, geez. Well, yeah. but, okay. but now I'm just playing. We all season. You only go once you start learning. But <laughs> listen, um, <laughs> uh, bro, I respect my I respect my ones that came before. Listen, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to turn 40 this year. And, we look good. You, know. I would, you only get old once you stop learning. So <laughs> that that doesn't mean nothing. That's it. Exactly. It's just a random number. I just feel like I'm like fine wine over time. So. But the way <laughs> the way you guys can support me is just the love. Like like the same way I can joke with the older generation. I can jo- joke with the younger one. Yeah. But they say, you know. When this is what kind of kills our our creative spirit, you know, this is probably something we wanted to do in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, this is something we probably wanted to do before we had to go and get a job yeah. at a corporation. And you know, the workforce does kill the dream. You know, right. and I'm not saying don't get your job, but don't let that job just be the the end of all. I mean, yeah. don't see yourself as Mister. I'm gonna say AT and T per se, and you're not trying to be. Super Mr. at and man, your whole life. Right. But take the initiative and say, hey, I do, and this is going to be the stepping stone. So I need people to still believe in themselves. And yeah. when you believe in yourself, that's going to create the vision and get somebody to get up and go take a grant writing class when it's right in your area. It's going to get you up and take advantage of the local things that's right in, right in, that's already in front of you. And you'll meet the local heroes. You'll meet the yeah. people kind of going out. It'll remove you off social media. Yeah. It'll give you something to post, tell you the truth. Because I don't like posting, and here I go. I'm like, oh, God. oh you don't like posting, but you're on me about being two weeks out on my postings. Oh, see, but it's different. <laughs> like me, I can, this, okay, she said, so I'm tapping into that. Yeah. Thing, you know, and this is just the resources why I need you guys to be you because yeah. I'm 5'5. Five, five. If I am the mold, break it. Break, mm. break through it. I almost broke the camera. I got to do a fist back, but break the mold. Yeah. Because, it's not hard in doing it. Um, the acting role, I walked into an audition. I had prior little parts that I got, but went with my cousin Lou, um, and he's the real actor, and I just like going with him, and you know? Yeah. I would land parts, but this time it was a co-starring position role, and it wasn't even carved out for me. I'm just going to yeah. let you go. There was no budget for me. They didn't even know I was coming. Mm. I left the Boys and Girls Club that day because my cousin was passing through, and we walked in the audition room, sort of set up like this. Like, hey, sir, you want to audition? You know I don't say no to the opportunities. <laughs> I'm like, come on. 
Right. I walk in there. My cousin, he go first. He, you know, he. I'm not gonna say he ain't from the hood, but he was like, you know, just say this world, say this line. You gotta be just be thug. And I'm like, and he was like, yo, man, I'm gonna pick you. My bad, Lou. Because I'm gonna pick you. I was like, bro. <laughs> and then the director, Peter Berg, shout out Peter Berg. He went in after my cousin, and I can feel the realm and the acting. And I'm not going to back down to this moment either. I'm not going to kill the creative in me. Yeah. I'm going to adapt. He went in, yo, whoa, 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 man, you sound. And I snapped, and we went into the banter. And we are my my audition lasted for a good five minutes. And there was a lady in there. She tried to join in. I put her in her place, just like he put Lou in my his place. Like, no, lady, you sit down too. You see, we talking, we talking. I just and we kept going. But this is why I need you guys to believe because, like I said, if I have the gate and it's open and you're coming to me prepared with your dreams, I just want to be somebody to set a solid foundation. Yeah. And if you work with me, I just want you to come correct. And I'm not going to not work with you because you're correct. I'm going to come at you the correct way. Yeah. We're going to sit down. Yeah. I think you're addressing something that is so important, which is um, eliminating the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the question was really like, how did you get into this role? But I think what I'm hearing you say is just being authentic to who you are, numero uno, and then believing that you can mm -hmm. do anything, Very right? So true. you may have not been invited or casted for that role, but you showed up as your full self. Yes. And that really illum illuminated who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And you were able to get casted. And I watched that, you know, I was able to watch the episode. And it was dope. Man, man. I mean, you would have thought you've been acting for years. <laughs> um, and just like as you're stepping into the role of the commissioner, right. hey, I mean, just watching you yesterday mm -hmm. being up there and getting that program off, you know, just seeing you in that role, I would have thought that you had been doing that for years. I'm going to say something to that. You know, I'd rather be a noble prince than a hapless king. That, let me say this then, because you probably got an idea. <laughs> A jack of all trades. Do you know that quote? I know that quote, yeah. Can you finish it? Queen of none. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, but that's that's bad because it's, it's ongoing. Yeah. It's a compliment. Mm. You know, it was, but the king or jack or queen of all, Yeah. you know, sometimes they're better than the master. Mm. That's the end quote. Yeah. Dot. When we say we don't even dot it, we didn't even finish our sentence. We was in school. There's a whiteboard in front of me. If I wrote it on there, I told you I'm using my imagination. If there's a whiteboard in front of me, squeak, yeah. squeak, squeak. Yeah, we, we kind of mess ourselves up yeah. big, big time. Yeah, and I, there's so much opportunity, um, and I'm really enjoying watching you mm -hmm. grow. And I've really had an opportunity to watch you grow from a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't you embarrass know, you. <laughs> you know your cousin is the one who broke my front teeth? We was playing football, That's my, nep football. my I mean, nephew. Your nephew, and we was fast. And he wrote, and he was the one put. And we was playing flat football. It wasn't malicious. Yeah. It was just the fun games we played. Yeah. Two hand touch, he touched my back. I fell, cut my eye open. He fell on top of me. Bow. They wrote a rap about me. Back on the block where Baby Essex bit the bit the turd. Yeah, you, I heard it. Do you know? Uh, in all these years, I never knew that it was my relative that mm -hmm. did that. Yeah. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's good. <laughs> That's how far we go back. That's how far we go back. For I had sure. these mashed potatoes and infamous. <laughs> I was like Kanye. I was talking to the mic like this. I like remember. Syrup. No, but yeah. Aww. So mm -hmm. before we move into this next segment, who inspires you, Essex? Um, you are just you are a beaming light. I see so much potential in you. Uh, I just. The people, I know that there are other people that see the same light in you, but who inspires you to keep going, to keep pushing, to keep building our community? You know, I had to sit back and you asked me that question. I had a, I went through therapy one time, not no crazy therapy, but you know, it's, you know mental health is still good. Um, and you just talk, it was like for a case. I can talk about it because I want. But, you know, and the psychiatrist ended up being my friend. Like we talked mm -hmm. and she just, she asked me the same question. And I had to dig, 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 dig real deep to this, mm -hmm. but it really is my father. Mm. Uh, my father, I've seen him go through so much and be one of the smartest men. I'm going to say something. Y'all don't, y'all can't do this, but I learned how to do electrician work by not being able to pay our bills. Mm. 
How do you run a power line to your house, bypass a breaker to get a generator to generate it real quick to get some light on at seven years old? And I never I never took it as like, yo, pops, why you, why are you doing this? It was yeah. like, I seen this hustle. Like, if you know my dad, my dad isn't a lazy man. But a lack of education and things in the world, but my dad is intelligent, but there's a lack of opportunities for somebody like this man's brain. Yeah. Like. I can't be lazy. All right. I can't. I remember getting in trouble. My 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 trouble, and you've probably seen me, was go sweep the crest. That's what you want to be. That's where they're going to have you. And mm-hmm. when you're done with that, go read the encyclopedia. Yeah. I, now I ain't going to go into the encyclopedia because y'all don't even know, probably know what that is. But yeah, I had to yo, read. Yo, listen, that was my punishment as Bro, a child. I had to and read I'm the thankful for it. Yeah. We used to have to read the encyclopedia at your house and at mine. <laughs> go read the encyclopedia. Yeah. I had a nice old fashioned look like the old time thing and books. You pull the book out like Beauty and the Beast <laughs> looking like. <laughs> it was an alphabetical <laughs> yes, order. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and when you had to clean up, you didn't let, don't put it, you put them back in order. Right. Yeah. So, I mean. My dad, like I can't, I can't lie. I seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and the truth, and that's what we grow up and we want out of a man. You know, when you want that father and son relationship, and not even father and son relationship, relationship with another man, uh, which is my father, to say, hey, I can talk to you, yeah, about the real. You didn't hide it. I seen the fire. Yeah, <laughs> <I> seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's. It's you say PTSD or anything. We just we're products of our environments, right. you know. Um, Andre three thousand said this, and I like to hold on to it. Ain't a hood a b- from the hood. Mom and dad turned on me, turned I'm um, stayed on me, so I turned out pretty good. Like, yeah, pops was a man. man. Yeah. pops was he was a, a man. he was a man's man. I mean, mm-hmm. um, like he said, we, we've talked about community, and your dad was a dad to me um, <laughs> when my dad wasn't. I did the community service. I had to sweep. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all couldn't pay me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he really showed up as a dad in so many of our lives. And so, um, you know, shout out to Mr. Essex Cook. Yeah. Shout out to Uncle. Um, because not it's only- a lot of us, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot of Essex Cooks. But mm-hmm. yeah, your dad yeah, specifically. And how he was a he was a father to me as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I want you to join me in this next segment, which is titled Taboo Talk. I'm ready. You ready? Mm -hmm. So, again, going back to community and seeing, you know, I can see a lot of myself in you and I'm sure vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. And our strength and our tenacity and our will to keep going. Mm -hmm. But somehow in our community, there's this dichotomy that's created between the black man and the black woman. Right. Um, And it breaks my heart. You know, I know that Malcolm X um, quoted that the most unprotected person in America is the black woman. And as much as that is true, Mm -hmm. our black men are also unprotected. Mm -hmm. And so it worries me as we continue to have these conversations to pull us apart and further us in coming together than to say, listen, we're both struggling. Mm -hmm. We're both struggling in this country. And how do we create commonality, create community and build one another instead of arguing about Mm -hmm. Listen, nobody likes the black woman, right. right? Or, I mean, because we, we all face systemic oppression. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Are you in competition with any other podcast? I am not. <laughs> I am not. Are you? Um, I'm not. Mm-hmm. And actually, I collaborated at yesterday's event with mm-hmm. two other podcast hosts where we all followed each other and decided that we would uplift each other by posting each other's content mm-hmm. and sharing it. Um, there's a lane for each and every one of us, right? Mm-hmm. And so going back to that quote, you know, jack of all quate, uh, all mm-hmm. jack of all traits, um, king or queen of none, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning that I may not cover everything on Queen's Vantage, but my sister or my brother can on their podcast, right. and I'm going to uplift them. I'm going to share that information. I'm not in competition now. Competition isn't an, always a negative thing, right? Um, because I think it can also be inspiration as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm more about like let's build together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how do we do this? Like, I want to ask your, I mean, you, I your just asked you this. that and I'm going to back it in because I, yeah. it, it, I like to hear people's perspective because I'm not always right. And, but I have a valid feeling everybody does. Yeah. But there's no war in between men and women. There's no war between people, black people. 
what color I was in the event. I seen the color of the, because it was a black artist fund. Yo, it's other brothers and sisters in here. And if we can recognize and unpervert what we're taught, even about women and the oversaturation of men and how men's supposed to be masculinity, I wish I can be five, seven. <laughs> Just five seven. Five seven. That's okay. cool. Because I, I was dunking at five five before I hurt my knees. Shoot, give me two more inches. It looked better. I don't want to be tall dunking. Now look. No, I ain't going. I like watch sports, but James Wiseman or some the old warrior in my heart. But yeah, but you know, we have to be able to figure our identity, and that's why I said, as people, yeah. you said, what helps me is know you, your own vision, mm. and the a lot of it is a lack of identity and knowing that there's no war between us. Yeah. I mean there's means there's no mission behind us. I mean if there's no mission behind us, how are we going to get together? Because we don't even identify how we're in competition with this. Right. So there's a big perversion there of when a woman makes money or a man makes money or if I stay home with my kids, which I do. Um, you know, am I less of a man because I'm taking on a female's emotion, not saying I'm acting emotional. Hey, girl, you know, I mean, I'm not going to yeah. do extra with my, you know, but I'm feeling that I love my son. Yeah, you're nurturing yeah. your children. Is Absolutely. Is that wrong? No. Should I be attacked for it? No. Should I attack you for being in that situation? No, because God wouldn't even yell at me if I was in this situation and take this grace. So with that same parable and relating it today in the real world, because this is our world now, it's, bro, I love women. I can easily sit here and say, Evan, I know you for a long time. I think you are a beautiful black woman. Yeah. I think you are something special. I've seen you come from the mud with me. You know what I yeah. mean? I done seen it all. I done th been through hell with you. Yeah. Literally felt flames. Yeah. Say, here, yo, you're a beautiful black woman. I love where you came from. I babysat, I babysat her kids. I had to run a daycare. Y'all yeah. do random stuff. Don't. <laughs> Yeah. That's why that bio was hard. The daycare provider, Mr. Technician, Electrician. No, and it's not all yeah. about that. It's just being ethic and knowing I'm me. Yeah. And they asked me what do I want to be. I want to be me. And I want Ebony to be Ebony. Yeah. And I want to be able to sit in the room and experience that that love that's already natural that I have from her. And everybody in here, I came in and made sure I show love to everybody around. Yeah. And I say, here, this world, I'm not going to be biased on the love. But I'm going to hold people accountable, too. So even as women and men, we hold each other accountable, but we hold each other accountable in the wrong areas. Yeah. So what are some things that you'd like to have black men be held accountable for? Child support. No, I'm just playing, fellas. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, listen, take care of your kids. <laughs> no, take care of your kids for real, y'all. Like, yeah. Uh, but just accountability for feeling. Certain yeah. things, I have friends with daughters and first-time daughters, and that's their first one. Hey, man, only real men make them first, you know? But, no. but you know, just having a daughter is humbling. I have a daughter, and I can't tell you how I would feel and how I would really, really, truly feel if I had a daughter the first time. But I want men to be honest with their feelings and say, yo, it's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm not telling you to share it on Instagram, Facebook, because there's a world outside of there. But I'm saying share it with somebody, yeah. a companion. Um Break it down through therapy. You can either process. If you process it, that means you're just talking to a therapy. Right. If you want to do a testimony, I mean, you're just talking to a person or more, when one or more is gathered in his name, he's present. That just means you're just giving your testimony about what you've been through. But God is glory and there'll be glory shown through that testimony. Absolutely. Or you want to be real and be like, yo, bro, I just hit for this and I didn't even have to go rob, dude. It's crazy. And there's levels you can come. But I want you guys to be real with each other on yeah. the struggle. Because it's too much fluffing right now. I like yeah. dirty shoes. You're going to yeah. see me like this, but it ain't going to matter. I can go talk to the homeless and go talk to the mayor tomorrow. Yeah. But does that make me any different? Yeah. I but love that, S. Just yeah. this perspective. I need I need the perspective of a man to change, not so much of a war between men and women and masculinity because times has changed. Yeah. And we know it's changed because we're in the house with our kids. Simple yeah. as that. There's a difference. Yeah. And a man is not less of a man. You know, I mm -hmm. think it's all about agreements. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what you might agree to in your relationship mm -hmm. um, as a man with your spouse it may look differently in my household. Right. But the thing is, like you said, that human experience and saying, like, I want you to show up as you. Mm -hmm. And if your best self is at home nurturing those babies and taking care of those babies and making sure that your wife is good, mm -hmm. that's enough for me. Well, I hear you. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, us as black women. What? 
What, we what women got to do? What what? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I think there's there's work to be done um, on both sides. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, it's like you said, knowing who we are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of us are confused and we are drawn to our titles, whether that be at work, um, whether that be on social media. And so we're drawn to what others perceive about us mm-hmm. rather than standing in who we are. Mm-hmm. And I think the first thing that I would say to black women is just know who you are. Right. Mm-hmm. I think like you said, like that's where it starts. And then loving one another, taking off the gender roles, what works like my thing is, yeah, I want my man to take out the garbage because I don't want to. Right. It's just because that's simply what I don't want mm-hmm. to do. But in terms of, you know, if my my husband and when I was married, there was a time when my ex-husband was home with our children. He mm-hmm. was the nurturer. He was the one taking them to school and daycare and volunteering at their schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a struggle. And I'll admit, I'll be very vulnerable in this moment to say when that was taking place, I didn't appreciate it mm-hmm. because it was all about the hustle and a bus on a struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, then I didn't have what I had now. And I was so busy chasing those things that I lost sight of what God was actually doing in our a relationship. Vision. It's always a vision and identity. And that's what I love about conversations like this. Thank you for inviting me here. I love yeah. being in this area like this because it just gives room to be vulnerable and understand, like, yo, I feel you on that. Like, yeah. I have a lack of identity sometimes and not say, oh, gender new. Oh. Yo, like, sometimes I do get tired and weary and feel less of a man. Like, yo, bro, I need to get up and do something. But surround yourself with somebody that's going to help you in those areas. That's why I say be vulnerable, be real. Yeah. Because it's good to process the words out and don't hold it in. Absolutely. Because so, there's a lot of things I'll suppress and and how you really are and then you fit this form of something you're not and we're all meant to be something more than what they're putting in front of us we're bigger than our careers Mm -hmm. we're bigger than just being a mom and a dad yeah being that person and identifying who ebony is yeah who essex is and understanding what a queen's vantage is coming from because i'm not coming from ebony's point of view i'm coming from a queen's point where it's going to be like yo this -hmm. is a leadership point yeah I can teach you how to make money. I can teach you how to do this. Yo, that's not fulfilling, but I need you to hear. Yeah. Yo, that you're a queen. Thank you. And And you're a king, my brother. Thank you. Listen, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can reach one, we can teach one. Mm -hmm. And I think that more conversations like this, more real conversations and being vulnerable about our struggles, but then also about our tenacity to build. Mm -hmm. Um, is how we reach a level of success. Mm -hmm. So um, I got to close us out today. I have enjoyed this wholeheartedly. I just got here. Did I just, did you get some goosebumps? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was checking my watch and my veins is sometimes tell with the shadow what time it is. But no, I'm just playing. (laughs) (laughs) So before we get out of here, S, are there any shout outs that you'd like to give today? Uh, You know, I just got to always shout out my wife and everybody, my rock behind me. And, um, not more so a shout out, but I want to thank the committee of Juneteenth and Sassoon. We're putting together Juneteenth and they're working wonderful. So June 18th through 19th in Sassoon, California, Sassoon City, California, where I've been the second annual Juneteenth. This one will be better than the first and hope to yes. see you out there as well. Oh, you know, Queen's Vanish podcast will be there. I have a booth mm-hmm. um, where we'll be talking about the podcast and then also getting into some other services that I, I offer that I haven't talked about quite yet. I have yet. a booth for other stuff yeah. too. Yo. So yeah, come on, come on out and check us out at Juneteenth. I was sat down today with my brother, Essex mm-hmm. Cook, commissioner of Sassoon City. Thank you. Um, it's been another wonderful episode of Queen's Vantage podcast. Listen, our crowns may tilt, but they'll never fall off. Thank you for listening to another episode of Queen's Vantage Podcast. Go subscribe to Queen's Vantage Podcast on YouTube and go follow me on Instagram. For more content, click the arrow.